And my Bible says, and my Bible says, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. If you really believe that, shout hallelujah. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 24, uh, beginning at verse 14 and verse 15, and you will find these words. It says, Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what I'm going to talk to you about for the next fleeting moments. Help me say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Joshua was committed to obeying God. Uh, did, did you hear what I said? He was committed to obeying God. And this book of Joshua is about obedience. Whether conquering enemies or settling the land, God's people were required to fulfill their responsibilities God's way. Did, did you hear what I say? That, 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 that God's people were required to fulfill their responsibilities God's way. In his final message to the people, Joshua underscored the importance of obeying God. He says in Joshua 23 and 11, he says, so be very careful to love the Lord your God. Then he says, and choose today whom you will serve. Yes, as he gets to chapter 24 and verse 15, he wants you to make a choice. Uh, the, uh, somebody help me say the choice is yours. Yes, yes, whether you're saved today or you're not saved today, whether you have a relationship with the Lord today, or whether you don't have a relationship with the Lord today, that choice is yours. There's nobody can keep you from the Lord, and there's nobody can make you go to the Lord. Uh, because of circumstances in life, and because you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you make a choice. Either you continue to be sick and tired, or you make a choice and say, I want to have a different life, and so I decided that I'm going to walk with the Lord. Is there anybody here that knows what I'm talking about? You have to decide on your own that you are the one that's going to walk with the Lord. Can nobody keep you from walking with God? Let me try that again. Can nobody keep you from walking with God? Listen, when you decide to do something, don't, don't play me. Don't try to play me. I'm old now, but I ain't that old. But I'm old enough now. I'm old enough now to understand you will do what you want to do. Uh, I'm going to keep going. You will do what you want to do. We've been doing what we think we're big and bad enough to do, what we think we're grown enough to do. Can't nobody tell us what we can and cannot do. I got this thing. I'm going to do it. Okay, that's fine. If that's your lifestyle, that's fine. But then be big and bad enough to ask the Lord to forgive you for your sin.
delayed the settlement uh, process by several centuries. Instead of driving out the remaining Canaanites, Israel absorbed them, bringing God's people even greater temptation to unfaithfulness. Joshua knew this to be a real danger. Help me say a real danger. Uh, we need to root out our sinful influences in our lives rather than allow them to lead us into sinful practices. Uh, he tells us, uh, he, he tells us to modify them things, kill, destroy. There, there are some things you have to do. Uh, don't look at your neighbor, just tell yourself, say, Sell. There are some things you have to do. In other words, there are some people you have to stop being around. There are some places you have to stop going to. There are
He called the people together and gave commands to help them where they were most likely to slip. The first place he said, he says, follow all that is written in the book of instructions without turning aside. In other words, he was saying, do the book. Or oh, help me say, do the book. You ever 
every now and then you've got to take an examination of yourself. Oh, my brothers and sisters, you're so busy about everybody else taking an examination of you. But if you take your own examination, you will know what they say. They have the wrong remedy for your suits, for your problem. And so what am I saying? I, okay, let me say it like this. Let me come down your row. Because we got folks that like the doctor on themselves. I, I know what's wrong with my body. I know I got this. And so I got this little solution. And I put over here. But then you go to the real doctor. And the real doctor tell you, it wasn't that. It was this over here. I stopped by to tell somebody. Before you break down, then we can develop strategies to overcome these temptations instead of being overcome by them. If you know what's wrong, you can get the right prescription for what's wrong. And when you get the right prescription, you can overcome the situations that you are facing. Why? Because you first of all got the right diagnosis of your situation. Somebody help me say thank you, Lord. I got to get out of here. Uh, but you must understand that Joshua was dying. So he called all the leaders of the nations together to give them the final word of encouragement and instruction. Uh, his whole message can be summarized in, the, in this verse. He says, cling tightly to the Lord your God. Joshua had been a living example of those words and he wanted to be that, he wanted it to be his legacy. The question is, what kind of legacy do you want to leave? Uh, what do you want to leave behind you? Can you leave them nothing better than Yes, 
sit. He's long suffering, but he does have an end time to the things that you're doing. And one day you won't have to pay, and hopefully you turn it around before you have to pay. He said, Be careful about demanding your own way because it might be unintended, painful consequences. Why? Because the Bible says in Proverbs 16 and 25, there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Do I have a witness here? Don't try to do it on your own, but you got to make sure you follow in God. Help me say, follow God. Help me say, follow God. Say it one more time, follow And we get to Joshua chapter 24. Joshua now is still that have gathered the people together. He's now dying. Now you remember in Joshua uh, chapter 1, Joshua had took over from Moses. And because Moses was leaving here, now and now, but when Moses left, he left a legacy for Joshua to keep going. Because there were going to be some coming after him that were going to need the word of God. And now Joshua is returning the favor. And now he's gathered everybody together because he is saying unto them, I'm leaving you now. But I have to leave you with some instructions. And so when we get to Joshua, chapter 24, Joshua began to remind the people of what the Lord had done. Can I remind you just a little bit of what the Lord had done? And Joshua said to all the people, Thus said the Lord of God, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in the old time. But I'm here to let you know, I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him to all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seeds and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac, Jacob and Esau. And I gave unto Esau my savior and to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. I sent Moses also and Aaron and a plague in Egypt according to that which I did among them. And afterwards I brought you out. And then he reminded them and I brought your fathers out of Egypt. And ye came into the sea and the Egyptians pursued after your father with chariots unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, He put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. And ye dwelt in the wilderness. And I brought you into the land of the Amalekites, which dwelt Before you 
How many know the Lord will?
I'm smoking with God. So he politely put it out. Soon we got to the restaurant, boy. <laughs> he came back and said, I appreciate you. Because it seemed like you had made a stay. And I respect your stay. Now, I, I had to go with him. And in his truck. Crack the window. He smoked. I turned toward the window. I'm so glad the restaurant was only about five minutes away. Oh, yeah, they all in there. I when he when I, he couldn't park fast enough. I will respect you where you are, but respect me where I'm at. I'm not gonna push. But don't ask me, but I'll show you the truth. Yeah, yeah. So as for me in my house, sometimes you're inviting things into your house that will keep you unfaithful. It's my BFF, it's my friend, this is my boozum. But, well, your boozum, but they're going to send you to hell. Along with them, some things you just gotta let go. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, my sister. Some angers you gotta let go of. Some unforgiveness you gotta let go. Trying to worship him. Here it comes. And keep you from having that breakthrough. Oh, God, I'm going to help you here. You see, you can't get that breakthrough if you don't allow it to. You got to let it go. Because you decide. You see, there's some things only God can handle. Only God can deal with. And only God can give you the strength to overcome. Do I have a witness? Everybody repeat after me. Everybody stand if you can. If you can. If you can. If you can. Repeat after me. Say, Father, forgive me for my sins. I acknowledge my wrongs. I believe that your son Jesus died on the cross. Was buried. And on the third day morning. God the Father, raise him from the dead. Now, Lord, I open my heart. I receive into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Father, as your people have said the repentance prayer, those that are on social media that are with us on today, Lord, as they have said the repentance prayer, we ask you, God, to put your angels over them and camp them with your angels, oh God. Because the devil wants to snatch out everything they just received. But cover them, cover them with your blood. Cover them by your angels, oh God. Let them know that you are God. You sit high, you look low. There's no situation in their life that you cannot handle. There's no situation, uh, God, in their life that you cannot forgive. You are a forgiving God. You are a God that soothes us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Trouble may come, trials may come, tribulations may come, but God, you are the one that rescues us. And in the silence, he tells us to comfort me, oh Lord. God, comfort me. Anybody need the Lord to comfort you? Come on, ask the Lord, comfort me, oh Lord. And Lord, as you comfort me, I'll be able to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord.
Sister Priscilla, you want to know why me and Lady J got two cars? You want to know why we got two cars? Just in case she decides she don't want to serve the Lord no more, I'm going to leave her at home and I'm coming to church. Alright, so her and her car can stay at home while I come to church. Guess what? That's vice versa. Just in case I decide I ain't going to church, I ain't, she will, she will leave me. Yes, she will. She will leave me in a heartbeat. <laughs> and she will come on church. So I, I make sure, and listen, if I got to catch the bus, I'm going to get to church. I had to call my little mother, can you make a pit stop? <laughs> Can you swing? All right, y'all already know. <laughs> Why? Because you're sold out to God. And when you are sold out to God, nothing stops you. Nothing stops you. When you're sold out to God, nothing stops you. When you stay with the ship, nothing stops you. From serving the Lord. Come on, put those hands together and magnify God. Put those hands together. You do better than that. You do better than that. Come on. Come on. That's not for me, that's for the word. That's not for me, but that's for the word. That's not for me, that's for the word. That's for the word. Come on, come on, come on, that's for the word. We're getting ready to receive our offering. We're getting ready to receive our offering on today. And you that are on social media on today, if you want to give, you can give by these platforms. You can go to our website, uh, lovwc.org. Hit the give button. You can give by PayPal or credit card. You can get by Giblify. But if you have Giblify as an app on your phone or on your iPad, hit that and go to Lily of the Valley Worship Center, Desert Hot Springs. You can also get by Cash App. Cash App is the dollar sign L O V 1779. You can get by Zale. And Zale is L O V W C at L O V W C dot org. Or the post office box, P.O. Box 2363, Palm Springs, California, 92263. Wherever the Lord bless you to be, wherever God lays on your heart, there's nothing too small, definitely there's nothing too large, but you will know and will go for kingdom work. Because this is fertile ground as we do the work and the will of the Lord. So to our social media, may the blessings of the Lord be with you. Thank you for chiming in with us on today. Peace.